today's video is a little more personal to me because I'm just going to share my heart on the things that God has been doing. And like you see from the title, that God is healing my mind of doubt. God is healing me of doubt. When I read the scripture in James, God took me to read the book of James and I read through the epistle. And I did not know that I'm that double-minded person because I've always been reading that episode. I didn't know that, that I'm that double-minded person. Because scripture says that this double-minded person will not receive answer to his prayer. And that's what I want to talk about today, how it looks or what it looks like to be this double-minded person and how God has showed me where I have been standing regarding being a double-minded person. Because I used to think that I'm not. I believe. Of course, I have faith. I'm not double-minded. So, but then I did not know what it looks like, what it even meant until I got to this and then God started showing me revelations of what it means to be double-minded, which is what I'm going to share with you to help you in your walk with God so that God will heal your mind also of doubt and double-mindedness. In James chapter 1 from verse 5 to 8, I'm going to read down the old verses 5 to 8. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Mm, that part alone touched me. That your faith is in God alone, not God and you. My hope is built on nothing less. It is not God and me. When I put it on God, my faith looks up to God alone. It continues to say, do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Of course, you see the waves, the way it blows, it is so unsettled. Poof, 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 poof up and down such people should not expect to receive anything from the lord whoa that is a hard word it's scary it was scary for me before i'm like no i don't want to be a double-minded person and verse 8 as the last verse i'm going to read says their loyalty is divided between god and the world and they are unstable in everything they do now when i search from the root word what that double-mindedness meant it means vacillating Someone that is indecisive, someone that is irresolute. Thinking about myself, I've been in this place of being double-minded. When I tell God or ask God for something, ask God for him to give me something. And now start going in my mind to think about how is he going to do this? Or will he do this for me? Do, am I even worthy for him to do this for me? That's double-mindedness, which I did not know. And some people are in that place of like, You've prayed to God, you've asked God for something, and then you look back, almost like looking at yourself. I don't think I'm, I don't think I deserve this. I don't think I'm worthy for God to do this for me. I don't think I'm, you know, righteous enough, whatever, religiously. I don't think this thing will come, but I believe God now, almost like you're trying to force yourself to believe in faith that God is going to do it for you. Oh God, please. Now that makes you go back again to pray the same thing to God, almost like to use that prayer to cast away. Those thoughts that are telling you, I'm not sure you're going to have this. I'm not sure you're worthy for this. I'm not sure you're qualified to have this wisdom or how is it even going to happen? Or you're looking for the avenues that God is going to walk through. And God is like, if you have faith in me, leave it for me. If you have faith in me, leave it for me. Depend on me. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself before I share what I want to share. But then when I realized that it means this vacillating, I was like, oh, I think I've been vacillating. I've been indecisive. That when I pray, I believe in that place. But when I go back, the devil fights in my thoughts, which a war in my thoughts. And I'm now going ahead to think about that prayer that I prayed. When is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? I'm not supposed to know how. When I trust him, I don't need to understand. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And without even knowing, I've been leaning on my own understanding. Then I came to a place of like, is it even possible not to doubt? Mm. And there was a place, there was a time that I was like, I don't think it's possible not to, not to doubt. I said to myself, I don't think it's possible not to doubt. But now I know that it's actually possible not to doubt. That when you believe God, you have enough history with God. You have enough history with him to say, God is going to do it. He doesn't have to do it the way I want him to do it. Because I'm not even putting up a picture to him. This is how you need to do it again. Because I'm not coming to a place of telling him how to do it, when to do it. I'm just leaving it for him. I'm believing him that he's going to do it. Because now I have history with him. And I'm saying this to help you because God took me through a series of thinking 
to heal my doubt of like I've prayed already and then in my subconscious I'm now saying another prayer because I am irresolute I'm indecisive because your subconscious is also a prayer you ask God for wisdom God give me wisdom and then you like ha this decision has come up now uh, am I sure that God has given me the wisdom if you have believed God has given you wisdom pick up the Bible and read that's how the wisdom of God is going to flow through. When you ask God for wisdom, the wisdom of God coming upon you looks like living daily life and making the right decisions. It looks like practical decision making in each day. Practical decision making in your relationship. Practical decision making in your every movement. Not like it has to come like an heavy, this thing that now you have quotes to release. You're releasing heavy quotes, intelligent quotes. Oh, that's now, that's the wisdom of God. No, it's the practical daily living. That you get to realize, oh, when you look back, I've really made some good decisions in my life. That is the wisdom of God. So it means, if you really check your life, you've been operating in the wisdom of God, but then you've been doubting that you have the wisdom of God. So that when you're even praying for the wisdom of God and asking Christ to give you wisdom and be your wisdom, you're, you're not sure that you've received it. I hope this helps you. I was led to Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, and it reads, Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. Now, hold on a minute. Even when you read this as a human, you'll be like, I don't, I'm not sure it's possible. Jesus, I'm not sure that's what you meant. Of course, he, he meant it. He meant it. He caused the fig tree and the fig tree withered and died. Now, let me continue. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. When I used to read this, I was like, is it possible not to have doubt in your heart? And he said, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Now, how do you not doubt it? It means when you pray, you believe that you've received it and it will be yours. That is you saying, I'm not doubting. I'm not double-minded. Now, the word doubt there, I checked it again. It's different from the word doubt used in gems. This one says to separate or make a distinction, to discriminate, to prefer, to withdraw from one or desert, to separate oneself in a hostile spirit, to oppose, to be at variance with oneself. What does it mean? It means when you've prayed for something, then you're like, you're now opposing that very thought. A thought comes to you after praying. You've left the place of prayer. And now, war starts waging in your thoughts. <laughs> Are you sure that mountain is going to leave? Maybe you were praying for a sickness to depart from your body because it doesn't have the right by your stripes you are healed. And you're like, are you sure it has left because you're still feeling symptoms? The Bible says, believe that you've received the healing. Believe that you've received it. So it means, how do you combat the thought? When the thought comes, you speak the word of God that I believe I've received it. Don't entertain the thought of doubt because your mind is meant to think. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carried out. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of these strong holes. I hope this is helping you because these thoughts are going to come to you. Like, are you really sure? Even when you're praying and after you're praying, it wages more because it might be like things around you might be happening that is like opposite of what you prayed for. And you're like, oh God. Now it is waging war to dissolve and pick your mind up in a place of doubt so that you separate yourself from what you've already decreed and believed God for. You believe God to heal you. You believe God to heal your, your child. You believe God for something and now you're doubting because you're now opposing that thought. Is it even going to happen? The Bible says, don't doubt in your heart. If you don't doubt, it will happen. Again, another example is Peter. Jesus called him out to walk on the water and he was walking. And then he started considering himself whoa and he's like is it me I'm walking on what water he said no when he cried out to jesus as he was sinking jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him you have so little faith jesus said why did you doubt me mm. and i checked the word doubt again because I, i'm telling you god healed my heart of doubt god was healing me of my doubt when i checked the word doubt it's meant to waver to have double opinion to duplicate. What does it mean to duplicate in this place? It means you're looking at yourself, walking on water and be like, I am not supposed to walk on water. But you're already walking. It means see yourself how God sees you. See yourself as the healthy person that God says by his stripes you are healed when you believe for healing. See yourself healthy. Which means after praying, when you come to a place of your thoughts, 
and the war start waging in your thoughts, see yourself in the lens of God. How does God see me right now? God doesn't see me in my sickness. God doesn't see me in my migraine and headache. God doesn't see me in my lowly place. God doesn't see me in poverty. God sees me in an elevated place. Faith without doubt. And keep that mindset. Keep that thinking. Keep that thought. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever, are tr- whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are worthy of praise, think on these things. Keep your mind on the things that you've believed God in faith for. Stay on that positive frequency. Don't let yourself start getting around people and around things that are going to make you start checking yourself. Am I sure? Now you're duplicating because you're, you're not going back to yourself. Your faith has left the place that it's supposed to be. Looking up to Jesus. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I'm looking to Jesus. How is Jesus looking at me? I'm looking to Jesus. Jesus is going to do this. I'm not considering myself. Do I have enough money to do this thing? I'm believing God to do something. I'm believing God to buy a house or to buy a car or to do whatever. I'm looking up to Jesus. I'm looking up to Jesus for provision. I'm looking up to Jesus knowing that he will exceed my expectation. I'm looking up to Jesus knowing that his supply will exceed my demands. I'm looking up to Jesus knowing that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever think, ask, or imagine. It means even in my thoughts. Because most of the time, we pray powerfully and when we leave that place, after praying, the devil comes to wage war on our mind and defeat us because we give in to the thoughts that is questioning us. And lastly, this is the most powerful thing that God showed me about me doubting. God was like, if you doubt, like James said, any man that is doubting will not receive anything from God. And I'm like, I'm not doubting now, I believe. And he said, what about the after thoughts? What about the thoughts that you think? What about the posture of your heart and your thinking? After the prayer, you've prayed in faith. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It means all your time staying, even after a moment of what you dedicated, your dedicated moment of prayer, your thoughts and your thinking are still praying. Because in your subconscious, your thoughts, what you are thinking about is still a prayer. So it says what you were praying in your dedicated time of prayer without ceasing, let that be your thinking, not your worry. Not what you worry about, but what you are believing God for. That whatever happens around you, you're not allowing them to dissolve the faith that you've put up in Christ. You're looking up to Christ. That is going to do it. He's going to heal. He's going to move the mountain. He's going to move the sickness. He's going to move whatsoever thing needs to be moved. My faith looks up to him. Up here in my thoughts. The weapons of my warfare are not canal. So the devil is going to wage the war and then God is going to win him. God is... God will conquer him and I will kill him because I'm not giving way for that negative thinking. I'm not giving way for negative people around me. And then God showed me something that being able to stay in faith and not doubt is coming to a place of dependency. I know you know about dependency, but this is the concept that God gave me about being a child. That children are dependent. Of course, you know, minors are dependent naturally. But For us, when it comes to us and God, our trust in God is for us to be able to rely on God completely and depend on God completely. And then God started showing me how our world is wired. Our world is wired to make us independent of people, independent of being helped because we want to be independent. From a child, even a child growing up, a young child, by the time the child starts walking and starts knowing how to carry spoon, you want to feed the child. The child will say, no, 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 don't feed me. I can feed myself. That's what the child is saying. Give me my spoon, mommy. You want to help them. They are learning. We learn independency on our own. We learn to be independent because it is coming as the fallen nature. When Adam ate of that fruit, he was saying, I can do it by myself. I need to have my own wisdom. I can be a God to myself. And most times, that's what requires us and we get to almost like trust in ourselves more than we trust in God. And God is saying, when you trust me, don't have a double mind. Your faith has to be on God, not on you, not on other people. It means even when you are trusting God, whoever God brings to help you, certainly they will, they will come because God brought them. Not you looking up to like, God, I know you can use that rich man to bless me. I'm looking for finances. You can use him. You're not the one to tell God what to do and when to do it. I love when God brought this picture to my mind. That even though the child is learning to be independent, 
as a child, but they are still dependent. They don't have a choice. Because when the child needs something from the daddy or mommy, the child is like, mommy, I need this. The child does not care how mommy is going to manufacture that. The child does not care how mommy is going to get it. The child does not care because he doesn't even know if mommy has the money to bring that to pass. But the child believes that mommy will do it because mommy and daddy has always been doing it. Wow, this shook me in my faith and was like, I've not come to this place of dependency in God. That God will do it. I don't know how he's going to do it. That he will do it. And that is where God is saying, bring them back in their thoughts. Come back in your thoughts to a place of being like that child that is totally dependent because they are dependent. They don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. If God doesn't help me, I'm not going to get help anywhere else. There's no other option. It means I don't have a duplicate option like plan B. Like if God doesn't help me, I'm going to go try something else. That's doubt. It means I cannot help myself. It means it is God and it's only God that can help me. This is a place of dependency. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 verse 3, Then he said, Jesus speaking, I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Our little children, like I just explained, they are dependent. They are dependent. They don't have a choice. They don't have help apart from their parents. So they trust in their parent completely. And they know that their parents will not fail them. Even though we live in a world that some parents are not parents again, but the real parent is a real parent and God is a true father to us. And even Jesus said, if your earthly father, when you ask for bread, did not give you stone, you ask for fish, did not give you a snake, what do you think about your heavenly father? Mm. This is bringing you back to a place of, let me completely learn from a child. Let me go back to when I was a child. If you didn't have good parents, sorry, but you can learn from children who have good parents. And if you are a good parent, you can learn from your children how they are relating with you, how they depend on you, and know how to depend on your heavenly father to help you in your situation. And this is so powerful. Like, I believe that you're getting it. Like, I'm feeling it right now. When God created us, he created us to be dependent. That's why dependency is a very big thing to God, us depending on him. Because the trees depend on God for survival because God provided nature for them, sunlight and then rain so that they can tap water and have nutrients to survive and the sunlight for them to be able to survive. So they are totally dependent on the ground and the sunlight. The fish is totally dependent on where God provided for it to survive, the water, aquatic environment. It means if you take a fish outside of the water, it cannot survive. And then when it comes to man, God made man from himself. He's saying, you are supposed to be totally dependent on me. Which means, anything that leads you out of that dependency brings you to a place of double-mindedness, doubt. And God is like, if you don't learn how to depend, a double-minded person, you will not receive anything from the Lord. I hope and believe that this video is going to touch your heart like it has touched mine. And I'm going to rewatch this video myself to let this stamp in my mind. Yes, God revealed this to me and showed me that I've not been dependent enough, that I've not been dependent like a child depends on the parents because I have learned the culture has taught me, my culture has taught me how to be independent. Everything I learned from being a child on earth has taught me how to become an adult. And what do they, what do they call adults? Becoming independent. What do they see adults as? They see adults as people that are independent. They can take care of themselves. They can do things on themselves. And I feel like I've come to a place that I felt like I could really do a lot of things on my own. And God is like, you applied that to me also. You were not supposed to. God, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm back. I depend on you totally. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm going to leave it here. And I believe this video is going to revolutionize your thinking and your thoughts. And share this video to someone. I believe it's going to touch someone. It's going to bless someone. Thank you for watching and God bless you. Bye.